Hello and welcome to Square One Games. My name is Exonovan and this is my Road to Completion Guide for Control. In this series, I will show you how to unlock every single trophy and achievement this game has to offer and I really hope you enjoy the run. Two quick announcements before we get started. Always make sure that you guys check down below in the description of each one of the videos in the series. I will have a full video timeline waiting for you down there. Also, make sure you guys read my pinned comment down below. It'll be the very first comment in the comment section. Just in case I need to make any corrections to the series, I will list those for you guys right down there. That is all the announcements that I have. Enjoy the guide. So you can see that the first thing I'm doing guys is adjusting my sensitivity, taking it down to 40. I've already played the game several times so I know that 40 is perfect for me. At the top there it says enable tutorials and I'm leaving that check just so you guys can see the tutorials on screen with my gameplay. You might want to leave that on in your game as well. And then I'm taking off the film grain and the motion blur. I'm just not a fan of those effects when it comes to games. Once you guys have all your options set up, go ahead and select new game at the bottom and we'll get started. So for about the next three minutes or so, we're gonna be running around picking up some collectibles. Here's gonna be our first one. It's called the Prohibited Items Reminder. This is gonna be collectible one out of 120. You guys can see in the bottom right, as soon as you pick up a collectible, you can hit your touchpad and then over there on the right where it says collectibles, you could just hit R1 to get over there. You'll see the red blinking triangle that lets you know that you have a brand new collectible. There's five categories, four of which we can see now, and you can also see which category that collectible was put in. But let me go ahead and explain how we're gonna be getting all of these collectibles. We will be picking up 120 collectibles in this game by the end of episode two. All three trophies that are related to collectibles will pop at the end of episode two. And the way that we're gonna do this, guys, is using backup saves via the PlayStation and the Xbox One dashboard. Now, in order to create backup saves, you guys need to be playing this game on the profile that's connected to your PlayStation Plus account, or you need a USB storage device, a little thumb drive that you can put inside of your controller port that will allow you to create backup saves. If you guys are playing on your PlayStation Plus account, you can actually create a save to the cloud. And of course, if you're using the thumb drive, you create your save file, add it to the thumb drive, and then we can load those saves up later. Being able to create backup saves and load those saves up later is how we're going to be able to farm for not only the collectibles trophies, but we're going to be able to farm for a lot of other trophies in the game as well. Now, of course, for those of you running the game on the PlayStation 4, I will have live demonstrations in this gameplay of how you guys can create and load your backup saves. But for those of you playing on the Xbox One, I will have a link down below in the description and in my pinned comment. You guys can read up on that article and it will tell you guys how to create and load backup saves on the Xbox One. Now, let me go ahead and state this and get this out of the way before we get too deep into this guide. I know that there is a portion of the trophy and achievement hunting community that does not like creating backup saves. They think it's cheating, it cheapens the experience, it's not fair that I had to get my trophy this way, but then Exonovant showing a guy that's making it super easy by creating backup. I've heard it all before, guys, I get it. If you decide that you do not wanna participate in creating backup saves, that's fine, you can still follow this guide. I will show you where you can uh, counter the fact that you're not creating backup saves, how you can get all the collectibles, even though you're not gonna be farming for them, how you can get through all the side missions, even though you're not gonna be farming for them. I will cover all that in this guide. And you guys know you can always leave me questions down below in the comments. I do try to get back to you guys within an hour because I know that sometimes you're playing the game and you want to know the answer right then. Sometimes I'm sleeping <laughs> or working on other projects, so I can't get to you guys right away. But I usually respond within 24 hours. So just make sure if you have any questions, you leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you guys as quick as possible. So let's go ahead and talk about what's happening with the gameplay, okay? Notice in the bottom right hand side of the screen it says multimedia objects of power. If you guys open up your collectible menu, you should have a total of eight collectibles out of the 120, and then we're gonna be in a space called the astral plane, okay? Anytime you guys end up here, uh, you're gonna be training. So obviously right now it's teaching us how to jump. Up here it's gonna teach us how to use a melee by hitting triangle, and then we're gonna be picking up our gun. That's our service weapon. Weapon, and this will give you guys credit for your very first trophy called choose to be chosen so the astral plane is really cool because every time you guys learn a new ability like now we're going to be learning how to fire our service weapon very standard stuff r2 to fire l2 to aim but you guys get to practice all that stuff before you get back into the main game now I want you guys to notice in the bottom left hand side of the screen we have a blue health bar. It's fairly small at this point, but it will grow over time. We're gonna be picking up some health upgrades along the way. I also want you guys to notice 
each time I kill one of these enemies, you'll see that they drop these little blue particles. That's more health, okay? So you're gonna have to decide as you play through this game how defensive you wanna be and how aggressive you wanna be. But I'm gonna tell you guys that this game really rewards aggressive play. And let me give you guys an example of what I mean. So normally with a game, I tell you guys to hang back, keep your distance, get shots on target, downrange, stay safe. That is a viable strategy with this game as well. But if you get shot and you're low on health, the only way that you can get more health is to kill enemies downrange and then push up into the map where they are in order to get those little particles, right? And that might end up getting you guys killed. So the best way to play this game is to be as aggressive as possible so that when you kill an enemy, you're close enough to them to get that particle anyway, to get that health benefit anyway, right? You can see when I killed these three enemies, I was right on top of them when I killed them. You know what I mean? Because if I kill them, even if they damage me, I'm going to be picking up that blue particle at the same time. Does that make sense? So even though they're taking off my health, as soon as I kill them, I'm getting that health right back. Now obviously being aggressive doesn't work in all situations. It depends on which abilities we have and you know which part of the game we're in. And I'll of course tell you guys what's going on with that as we play through the guide. When I want you to be aggressive, when I want you to play defensive. And sometimes I will actually showcase defensive strategies but then when the combat scenario is over with, I will show you just by pointing my gun in various places or standing behind certain parts of the map, hey, this is where you could have been aggressive. And sometimes I'll do it the opposite way. I'll play it out really aggressive in the gameplay. And then as soon as we're done, I'll go back and show you where you could have got some crazy angles on some enemies if you wanted to slow the combat situations down and play things out a little bit more defensively. Ultimately, it's really up to you guys how you want to play out these combat sequences, but I would encourage you to play as aggressive as possible. Trust me, there are so many more benefits to playing this game aggressively uh, than playing it defensively, okay? Especially when it comes to the health. And now we have two more collectibles I want you guys to pick up. One of them is going to be out here, and the other one's going to be in the shelter up ahead on the right. Yep, that's going to be the dinner reservations. And then up here on the right is going to be the shelter. We're going to be picking up the Marshall. AWE Investigations. That's going to be your 15th collectible out of 120. And then you'll notice to the left we have another icon that we can interact with. I call these treasure crates uh, to my left here. I don't know what the game calls them. Everything is random. So whatever you see me pick up in this treasure crate, when you guys open it, it's going to be different for you. You can see in the bottom right hand side of the screen, I got a weapon mod. It was called Damage Boost. You can see there's my service weapon grip. Then I have the weapon mods on the right, and then down below I have the personal mods. Now because the treasure crates give out random rewards, I will never put one of these on my weapon or my person. So no weapon mods and no personal mods for me. But you guys can do that at home. I just didn't want to have an advantage over you guys when it comes to the gameplay. If I pick up a ton of damage boosts and I got crazy health recovery items and I'm fighting a boss and this looks super easy and you guys didn't get those in rewards, then it's not really fair, right? I'm not really guiding you through the game at that point because I have an advantage over what you guys are playing at home. So I'm not gonna accept any of my rewards. The only reason why I'm picking them up is to show you where they are, and we can also break down those rewards later on, and that's gonna help us pop a trophy. But in the meantime, you guys make sure that you're throwing on as many weapon mods and personal mods as you can to make the game as easy as possible for you. Now you guys are probably wondering what this red glow is all about and how many color adjustments I made this video, but I didn't make any color adjustments, guys, outside of my normal color adjustments. This is just how the game looks by default. Uh, anytime you get near a control point and we have to actually interact with 25 of these in order to pop a trophy, you're gonna see this red glow on the screen. Now in order to cleanse a control point, we need to kill all the enemies in the area and then interact with the control point by pressing square and then the red glow will go away, the building will shift back to normal and we can move on, okay? Notice what I'm doing here, just set up in the corner, perfect head glitch. Uh, the only issue you're going to have when you're in that corner, sometimes they will toss a grenade at you guys. So if you want to, you can shift yourself over to one side of that cover. They're going to toss the grenade to whichever side you're on. See what I mean? So if you're on the right side, that's where the grenade's going to be. When they throw it, just simply move to the left. Keep doing that. You guys will be safe. When you're done, interact with this control point, and then we'll move on with the campaign. So after you guys cleanse that control point, we're gonna run over here, open up the shelter. We're gonna free this lady. 
She's going to be giving us main missions throughout the campaign. You guys can continuously press O if you want to to skip the cutscene. Although, I would encourage you guys to watch them if it's your first time playing. They're pretty interesting. Then we're going to come over here and press square so we can cleanse this His Corrupted agent. And now all we need to do is run over here and talk to Emily Pope. That's the lady that we just freed. That's going to trigger another little cutscene. Then we're going to end up in the boardroom. Okay, after that boardroom cutscene is over with, you guys are going to pick up another trophy. It's called Welcome to the Oldest House. That's for completing mission one. You guys should also have 18 of the 120 collectibles in your menu. Go ahead and check that, and I will see you guys right back here in the next episode. Be good.